Hi, my name is Gus Grindle, and today we're going to look at how to prepare one of the most productive uh, baits and probably the cheapest bait to use to fish for roach, the humble slice of bread. Today we're going to look at how to produce liquidised bread for feeding into the swim um, to attract roach into the peg and we're going to look at how to prepare the hook bait, uh, the punch bread. In order to carry out this uh, prepared bait, we're going to need a few things. First of all, chopping board, otherwise I'll cut the table and my wife will kill me. A sharp knife to take the crusts off the slices of bread. And a liquidizer uh, to liquidize it. You can use a normal sort of blender, tool blender, if you don't have a food processor. But the food processor just makes it a little bit quicker. We're also going to need, a bit later on when we look at producing the punch bread, we're going to need uh, some cling film and access to a microwave. So, the first thing we need to do then is we're going to have a quick look at the breads and the types of bread we use. Generally speaking, I use Warburton's um, sliced, medium sliced bread for most of my bread punch work. Um, it works really well, it's got really nice texture, works great for um, producing the slices for punching out bread, and also, if you leave it for a couple of days, it makes really good liquidised bread. Okay? And you'll hear that, you've probably heard that from a lot of people, you need um, a loaf that's a couple of days old. That's nothing to do with the texture or the liking older bread. It's simply that when you liquidise it, it come, produces a much finer crumb. If you live in Scotland, you can cheat a bit here, and you can get hold of some of this stuff. This is the um, mother's pride one, but it's called Scottish plain bread. And the texture of this is very much different to, to more modern, even um, those like Warburton's and the wax paper. In the um, Scottish plain bread is what my mother would call proper bread. It's old fashioned um, type bread, very tight, uh, close texture. And therefore, when you liquidise it, you don't have to wait for it for a couple of days old. You can liquidise it straight out of the packet. It will form a nice fine crumb that will go through a, a, a maggot or a pinky ribbon. Um, and you can get fishing straight away. If you don't, can't get this stuff, then buy a slice of Warburton's medium um, sliced loaf in the wax paper, keep it for a couple of days, um, punch a few holes in the bag, or let the air get to it a little bit, and then, and then liquidise it then. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to quickly reorganise so you can get a better close, uh, closer look less of me and more of what we're trying to do and then we'll crack on with filming the liquidising, preparing the liquidising the bread. Okay, so now we've got the bread out of the packet, we've taken the crusts out and all we're going to do now is we're actually going to cut the crusts off the bread. And whatever bread you're using, the reason you do this is that the crusts are quite dry and hard as they are on every sliced bread and what they do is they, they don't absorb water as well and they sink at a very different rate. And what you want your bread punch to do, or the liquidised bread when you put it in, is to all go down at the same rate. You don't want it drifting out of the peg at different rates, okay, it has any toe on it. So all we're going to do, simply taking a knife, you can do a number of slices of the thing, you don't need to be 100% accurate, although you can waste a bit of bread if you're not, you know, you don't take a bit of care. We're just going to cut, basically, cut the crusts off without wasting too much of the bread like so, all the way down, okay, push those onto the tray, hopefully keep the mess down to a minimum, now cut them all the way down like that, okay, a little bit extra off there, okay, now we've got basically crust free slices of bread, we'll do this other piece here, down we go, take it off, don't waste too much, down the edges, the edges on the Scottish plain bread aren't too bad, but it's always best to be safe than sorry. Okay, all the way down. Right, push that all onto the tray out of the way. Right, now we're left with the, the slices. And all we're going to do is simply cut them down the middle like this. Okay? Only one reason we do that is simply, otherwise, they won't fit into the, the spout of my um, uh, liquidizer here. So basically cut them down and now you're ready to go. We're ready to liquidize bread. So what we're going to do now is we'll have a quick look at liquidising bread. Very, very simple, I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs, although I am going to have to move the table back slightly. Let me just adjust the camera, because true fashion, the table doesn't reach the plate. Uh, this is 
why it's best to do it when your wife's out, so you don't get into too much trouble for making a mess. Huge kitchen, not enough plugs. Right, okay, so now we've got our blender. Stick it in here like this, move this across slightly so you can get a better view. Okay, all we're going to do is turn the machine on and put in, now I'm going to put in four full slices, okay, at a time. Okay, eight little squares. Any more than that and it won't blend properly, any less than that and it doesn't blend properly. So. Find out how many machine takes, look at the consistency you get out, uh, get out of it and then stick with it. So, sorry about the noise, but it helps if you turn the, the plug on. slices smacking into the blades. So actually when it starts to go quiet you're pretty much there. It's always worth giving a quick shake, knock, knock all the bits down, and give it another, another quick blast. And we've done that, we can lift the top off, tap all the bits off the thing, otherwise it goes absolutely everywhere. Okay, and there we have Some nice liquidized bread ready to go in the water when we're fishing. And that's all there is to it. What you can do is once you've liquidized the bread, you can then run it through um, a, a riddle, a maggot riddle, and any large bits put back in the blender and re-blend them, therefore you don't waste any. Because you're going to riddle it out before on the bank anyway, before you fish. All I then do is take a fresh polythene bag. Pop the bread crumbs into it, and I'll liquidise the rest of the bread, place it all into the bag, seal it up, and then the trick comes in. What you really need to do with your bread afterwards, once you've got it sealed into a bag, is leave a little bit of air in, like that, and then you want to pop that in the freezer. Okay? Let it freeze, and then the following day, if you're not going to use it straight away, you can, still, you can use it like that, but if you can freeze it and then defrost it, what it does is the freezing process forces all the moisture out of the bread. And then when it defrosts, it draws it all back in again, but not quite as much. So you end up with a much finer um, texture after a while. Okay, so after you've frozen it a couple of times, so if you take it to the bank and you don't use it, bring it back, sling it back in the freezer. Okay, it'd be great for next time. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it there. I'll finish liquidizing the rest of this, hopefully before my wife gets home and um, gives me a row for making a mess in the kitchen. Um, and then what we'll do in the next little clip is we'll look at um, how to produce the, uh, the bread for the, pup, for the hook, the punch bread, and how to store it. And then following that, I'll do a clip on actually on the bank, out fishing for some, for some roach. So thank you for, thank you for watching.